but amen. So, Tuesday today is Mark's uh, a special day of the week where Jesus um, was, he left Jerusalem and he never went back. Uh, there was the, the last day of Jesus' teaching. Uh, Tomorrow he will be spending the day in Bethany with his disciples. Thursday he will be doing the establish the Last Supper. Friday is the crucifixion. Saturday he will be in the tomb. Sunday is the resurrection. So today, technically, the last day uh, when he spent with the people at Jerusalem. And was his last message, last teaching, last opportunity to teach. Uh, so all the parables and all the teachings today mark his last words um, uh, uh, among the people. And it was very clear. So when he, he started to, to teach or when he concluding his teaching, he was very clear about, you know, can pick three kind of threads in his teaching. He was very clear that there is an end. There is an end. They call the day today is the day of the Lord, right? Um, so he was very clear that there is an end. And he was very clear on the judgment, on how he's going to judge, and he's coming again to judge, and how he's going to judge. And he was also clear about his kingdom, that he is establishing a kingdom and that was clear throughout the whole week and it's going to be even more clear as we, as we progress uh, toward the end but it was there's something special about that relationship with the kingdom that we're gonna uh, maybe spend a few minutes on it today so first it was clear about there is an end um, statistically you know Everyone here should, you know, we don't need like a genius in statistics that um, what's the probability of us standing before uh, God in the end of days? What's, what's the probability of that? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Nobody is going to escape that. Like, there's, there's, there's no way, right? So it's very clear, hundred um, percent, that... As St. Paul is saying, we are going to give answer. We are going to give answer. 100%. So today we want to spend the time to say, do I have answers? How am I going to answer? There is an end. Whether we behave like it or not, whether we believe it or not, there will going to be an end. And... Um, personal end for each one of us, and 100%, um, uh, no, no doubt that we are going to stand and give answers. We're going to be asked, and we are going to be giving answers. The, so that's, that's about the day of the Lord, and, and throughout the prophecies today, you will see that that day would be very horrific for certain people, or it's going to be very joyful, um, like jumping from joy for others, right? Like it's, it's kind of, it's going to be one or the other, the sheep or the goats, right? The, you know, the, um, some people will be allowed in, some people will be cast out, thrown out. So that's kind of like the, the judgment. And he was very clear about the judgment, how he's going to judge, um, so we, we saw the parable of uh, the talent, and he saw like the third, the guy who failed that test, who his answer wasn't good enough, you know. He said, I, I was afraid of you. I did not like how you run your kingdom, and I, uh, I have hidden your 
I hid your, 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 the talent that you gave me. I did not invest. Uh, and here, here you go back, the same thing. And, and, and God told them, you wicked and lazy servants. So one of the criteria how he was going to judge us about God judge us about our laziness. If if someone spend his life lazy, not investing God's talent, God's opportunities, that's one way of 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 of, of judgment. So we need to to come to that place of how am I investing? How am I using my time, my lifetime? Because since Isaac the Syrian, he says, life is given us. We are given this life for the purpose of repentance. So do not waste it in other pursuits. That's how St. Isaac the Syrian is looking at, you know, this judgment day. So, you know, I give you life. I give you um, time on this earth to pursue repentance. If you're wasting, if I'm wasting my life here on earth with other pursuits, I'll be judged as lazy, as foolish. And it's the easy stuff that other parable is telling us how also going to be judged when he said, you are blessed of my father. Um, I was sick. I was hungry. I was, you know, thirsty. I was imprisoned. I was naked. And you give me food, you give me drink, and you visited me, and you give me clothes, right? So it's easy, easy stuff. So who will be judged on our laziness? We would be judged about our charitable, you know, that's St. John Chrysostom would say that this is the, the oil in the vessels, our charities, our how much we store. Um, so we will be judged on how much love we offer on this earth, how much we care about each other, how much, you know, the, 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 the top two commandments, love God with all your heart. Mm, that's the laziness part, you know. Love your all heart, all strength, all mind. So we all know how to read. How much do, are we reading the Bible, the, the commandment of God, right? Um, from all our hearts, from all our mind, from our strength. Um, how much we, 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 we wake up in the morning, or like how much time we spend sleeping versus uh, spending time with God. Which one, you know, um, how much time we spend on His plan versus our own plan. How much we love our neighbor, second commandment, second top commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. We would love a lot of stuff, and we spend a lot of energy getting those stuff. But how much we spend for our neighbor to get those stuff as well, that he likes, that they like. We we're going to be judged about that as well. So he was very clear on the end. He was very clear on the judgment. He was also very clear about the kingdom. And one, one thing about the kingdom is that many times when, when we are, especially at church, we got used to the words of he came and saved us. And here on, on Holy Week, we spend the whole week, uh, we say it's, it's, it's he's saving us. He's, Today we added the word, my, my, my Lord Jesus Christ, my good Savior. But we've got to understand what he's saving us from. Savior from what? Saving us from what? This is very crucial to understand. St. Anthony says that if you 
know yourself, you would know God. And if we know what he's going to save us from as Savior. So it is very important to understand our journey in this Holy Week. This is a very condensed journey that we take throughout the rest of our life. But this week is, is like the, like on steroid, like salvation on steroid. And then we take that and then we live it, spread it out the rest of our life. But here's the, like the, a very overwhelming dose of, of what Christ has been doing to us throughout our life. And, and the dose that we are taking during this week is to be transformed in our nature, inside us, to become one with him and to be of his mind and of his nature. Christ, the incarnate Logos, and this is, this is you know, all, all what we have said so far in, in, in this sermon. Could be, you know, how God is judging, how God is is, is there's an end? All this can work out. I could just said the same exact talk in in other religious settings, right? Like in, in, a, in a Muslim, you know, in a mosque. You know, they, they say like there's an end. God is gonna judge. The same exact thing, right? In some other, you know. But what's unique about our Savior, our Jesus, that He did not come? I think C.S. Lewis said this. But he, he said, Christ did not come to make bad people good people. But he came to get dead people living people. Right? Our Christianity, we, we, we understand the condition of humans. The condition of human is we are, is, is that we are dead. That meaning that we have breath, I'm, I'm alive, I'm, I'm talking here, so, but the death here is the separation from God, is the falling apart from the original plan, from the original condition, that's death. Because if we understand what we are supposed to be, we'll understand God as a good savior, my good savior. My good Savior, because he is restoring me back to the original creation, to the original union with God. Humans are created in a very high rank. Very high rank. Higher than the cherubim and the seraphim, like we say about uh, Mother Mary. They are the servants. They Glorify God because he saved, because he created humanity. This is the, the song of our salvation. They singing the song of our salvation. That's the cherubim and the seraphim. So we, we got to understand that union. We are working out throughout the week to become one with Christ. That's our savior. That's our sa his saving act, is to get our will, our nature, to become in harmony and in union with the will of the Father. We see Jesus obey obeying to the death. He took our will, he took our nature, unified it with div his divine nature, his divine will, and now, it's two will, two nature in one. And he is offering that to the Father. So we are all become saved. So our prayer today is not just to review our answer for the end or to love one another from our heart, from a whole heart, but to do that, to do exactly those two things as part of his nature, as part of his will, 
in us. Many will come and say, Lord, we have preached your name. We have um, cast out demon in your name. We did, we did, we did. He said, I don't know you. You were not one with me. You did it, but not as part of my plan, my will. You were not saved as part of my nature, my will. You know, the last word Jesus told um, the people in Jerusalem, he said, how many times I wanted to gather you, but you didn't want to. I wanted, but you didn't want to. And that's where we understand salvation is the union of our will with his will. We know the time where, and, and we are working progress. Ultimately, ultimately, we know when we obey God out of pleasure, out of natural, we want what he wants. We love what he loves. And we care about what he cares about. We are not God. He is God. And that's salvation. That's, we know, we know we are saved when our nature is changing to become our will inside, will, our desires are changing when it's harmonized with God's will. That's why you see all the, our saints or our, you know, when, when they want something, God, do it. They are one. That's where we have no hesitation of loving our saints because they are one with God. They are one. They have the same will. May God give us to understand the day of the Lord. Today is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord started. We, 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 we sung Picasronos this, this morning because the day, of the, Lord of, the day of the Lord has started. Every time we take communion is the day of the Lord. Every time we stand up before God in prayer, it's the day of the Lord. And every time Christ is working out his salvation in us, he is transforming us to become his nature, to become to change our will, our desires, to become his will and his desire. To him is glory forever. Amen.